to MK Quilts. Melissa is on the road, so I thought it'd be a good time for me to come to the shop and give you a little demonstration of how to check your timing. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to open up the front of the machine here to get down to your hook and basket. We're gonna use some of the tools, which I'll show you in a moment, to precisely test your timing. Now, bad timing can lead to bad stitches, and how often do we have tension issues and other things that might cause a uh, problem? So, uh, it's to everybody's advantage to be able to look at and test their timing. Now, I do wanna put a disclaimer here. The average user does not wanna take out the tools and try to adjust timing on these machines because it's very, very precise and takes a lot of practice. Uh, usually the first couple times people do this, it can be 45 minutes to an hour before they get it just right. So this is really going to be a, a brief education on testing timing. If it's off, then you're gonna have to make a decision. If you're a customer of MK Quilts, you definitely call us and we will work it with you to either get someone on site or get you back timed in a quick fashion if necessary. If you work for someone else, MK Quilts is always here for you. Um, we will sell you the timing kit. A lot of retailers have the choice but choose not to, requiring you to bring it into the shop. We just want you to have the information so you know whether or not you are really looking at a problem dealing with timing versus something else such as tension, uh, thread, a lot of other things as we all know. Okay, so as you can see, Samson and I have removed the bars from the table. That's very nice to do, but if you're in the middle of something where you have the quilt on the table, just move the machine all the way to the farthest end so that you can get around and to the front and the back of the machine, which you'll, you'll hear shortly is important. Uh, take the thread out of the needle, take the hopping foot off. This is the new glide two foot. You need to then remove the needle plate, two screws, a small screwdriver helps. Oh, and this machine, you can see right now could be cleaned, huh, Sammy? Oh. Now you can actually use compressed air on the uh, newer machines. Uh, the older machines, they usually want you to brush it out. Okay. If you're having problems, the first thing to do is to clean. Definitely clean the area around here because that thread is whipping around at thousands of revolutions per minute here. So Sammy's gonna continue to help out as he usually does by getting in the way. And we're gonna take a look at uh, how to look at the timing. Now, the two parts that we sell as our timing test kit are one of these custom clamps that will go around The needle bar, very important. And then they call this the loop lift gauge, okay? This one is 2.2 millimeters. It's the one that all but the Infinity use in the Handy Quilter models. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that to make sure we're precisely timed. There are videos on the internet that talk about not using gauges and things and or other machines and stuff, you don't want to do that. The other thing that I've also seen is that people will try and time the machine with the case open. Now I've done my own testing. If you time it with the side of the machine off and then you put the machine back on, you will actually get a bending and a shifting of the machine enough that it can put you a millimeter or two off. And you know, if it isn't perfect, it's not good. So always have the machine together, especially with the handy quilter machines, the two clamshells together, solid, 
give it that structure that a lot of machines don't have in the industry, uh, where there's very little flex possible when the clamshells are together. So what we're gonna do, Sammy, okay. Now the challenge with these deep machines is I cannot reach easily to the back to rotate. And Sammy, I'm gonna need to ask you to man the chair for a second there. All right, look cute, yes. All right, so I'm gonna reach to the back and rotate. I almost made the mistake, huh, Sammy? One, you gotta rotate it in the right direction and I can't do it with my left hand like that. So what I did, which is very important, and I'll try and maybe clip in some extra video here to show you close up, but being alone, we have to do what we can. I made sure that the needle was in the most down, the lowest point possible. So if you saw that, um, the needle reached the lowest point possible. You take the little clamp, you take the spacer and lay it across the top of the clamp there, and we'll get closer close-ups here. And you slide it all the way up and use an even force. Now remember, every little, little thing matters. So just getting it up there and tightening it firmly so that when you pull the spacer out, there is a 2.2 millimeter gap from the top of that spacer to your needle bar bushing up there. So it's very close. All right. So if you get that perfect, and I do this at least three times to confirm, it's very challenging, just like this dog. All right, dog. You're not being real helpful. Okay. So I bring it back until it stops. Okay, so by rotating it so that the clamp comes up, now you don't wanna do it hard where it pushes the clamp, but that raised the needle 2.2 millimeters. And if everything's looking right, whether or not the bobbin case is in or not, the point and you will have to have pictures overlaid here and we'll take some more is going to be exactly to the edge of the needle as well as positioned within the throat where the where the hole is and the thread comes through when it's creating that loop you'll see in with the shape of the needle it comes right across just grazes the needle but doesn't deflect it and at that point it will grab the loop that was just created there's a lot of other videos and i'll see what i can patch in here for it but you want to make sure that that timing is perfect not only as the things rotating crossing the needle to the other side right here but then you also want to make sure that it's actually touching the needle just because if it gets too far back from the needle you're going to miss that loop. There's a chance of error there. So doing this, I mean, the first time I did here, and I'll be honest, I need my glasses at this point, or I use my cell phone to take pictures to re-verify this. And I will do this two or three times before I ever make a judgment about whether the machine's in time or not. Now this machine's been stitching fine, but there's potentially a little out of time here because I can see a little bit, I think, of the point on the far side of the needle. So I'll get my glasses and we'll check that out. Okay, I'm 
going to try and hold this slow or as steady as I can. We're zooming in a little bit here. Do you see that the point goes beyond the needle? Just a little bit. Whoop. Now that could be... Whoop, there it is. Because I wasn't exactly precise on putting the space in there. So we're going to do that again and check it again. All right, so we're going to try this again. I moved the handlebar out of the way. I removed the bobbin case. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the needle to go down to its lowest position. you'll notice that I even put my finger on there so I could feel it and not only see it. So that should be the lowest point of travel for the needle. Now all the other obvious things, you should be using the right needle, the needle should be all the way up in there. We're not going to cover everything here. We're going to take take the clamp here We're going to take the loop lift gauge. I like to do it since there's groove here, put it face down instead of face up on the edge. Then I like to lift with two fingers, making sure the gauge is level. This is the part where you can get a half a millimeter easily. You know, you're lifting firmly on this as you tighten. As Glenn, our trainer, would say, there should be friction, or sh there should be a little friction there. I'm going to even try and get that up a little firmer, all the way up, even along the bushing, firm in there. There, that felt good. There was a little friction, okay? So, as we continue to rotate... The handle in the back, not hard, just until it stops. It's up there. Okay. So, 2.2 millimeters. Now I'm looking at this, and this looks like it's perfectly timed. You know, on the last one, it seemed to go a little bit too far. So, since my glasses are not here, I... I'm going to make you look at my beautiful shirt I got there. All right. So we come in and we look from this side. I can't tell, so let's go to the other side. Sorry for the shakiness, I'm really zoomed in, but doesn't that look good? See when it comes around, boom. And you should be a millimeter above the lower point on the needle. All right, I apologize if the angle of this camera is not perfect, but what I have determined here is that we do not have a timing problem. And more importantly, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, okay? If you're not 100% sure of anything, don't change it, okay? There's enough other things around um, getting proper stitches, including cleaning, which this one's in need of cleaning, which is on my list before MK gets back to totally 
clean out and service her machines while she's gone. But Ellen is also in the shop for those quilters out there that are looking to have their quilts finished up. There's not a big delay in the shop. We keep things moving and Ellen is just amazing. So please check out our website, mkquilts.com, about sending your quilts in, dropping them by if you're local. And also you can find the new testing kit on the product store over under the hardware and accessories section. Uh, they are not cheap. I cannot buy them cheap. I also tried to make my own. You're, you're just dealing with such very fine tolerances here. Uh, you've invested a lot in the machine. I would go with the standard parts and check it. Uh, like I said, we have more and more of our certified technicians around the country that can actually come out to your place to do timing. Uh, nothing's for free, but we can discuss and maybe put a couple people together. If you're in a timing situation where it has to be fixed, it's one of those things that it's not a warranty issue because some unfortunate incident had to occur to knock it out of time. You're expected to take it into a retailer, a certified retailer to get this done and they usually charge you. Um, hopefully this helps you understand that you can check your timing pretty easily but I would recommend, unless you've had practice or you're willing to make it worse, to not um, try it yourself without some tutelage. Now, that being said, as a MK Quilts owner, since we do sell nationally and some of our technicians are several hours or more away, we do give training upon request if you do have a engineering spouse, or if you're good with your hands, we will um, give you some training in this area as well. Uh, it is very critical that you know how to get things back in the right place. Uh, there are some tricks, should your timing just be a little bit off. I know MK has covered this in her videos and just the Facebook group. If you're not part of Melissa's uh, closed Facebook group, uh, you should be. Uh, there's a lot of smart people in there besides Melissa that can help out in situations. Um, rotating this the needle to the five o'clock or seven o'clock type position, all that's doing is changing where the loop forms. You're pushing the loop a little bit later or a little bit earlier so that that hook can connect with it. So we're always here to help. Uh, if you want the, I know these videos would be so much better, but they wouldn't be as cute if Samson wasn't in my lap. All right, Sammy. So let's do one more thing here. Even before you get into the timing, Bobbin case, always, always, always have a second one available to swap out because it can eliminate issues that you might be thinking of our timing. They can wear, I've had several recent cases where replacing the bobbin case has solved stitch issues. Here again, cleaning is very important. We do even sell the little screws and the tension, I'll be honest, I don't know what they call this little part, so that they can be replaced on bobbins. I haven't done a lot of that, but they're very inexpensive. They're also available on the store. If you, if you get one that you know is giving you bad stitches, you might wanna try replacing that. This thing is, I don't know, it's around 40 bucks, I think. It's not a cheap part, but definitely, Definitely one of the things that we at MK Quilts recommend all our owners keep is a spare bobbin case, if nothing else, for troubleshooting. So here again, 2.2 or 2.6 for the Infinity. We have both of them in stock. And these little custom clamps that go around the needle shaft. 
are very important. I've seen different things done in the past, but this is the simplest way to do it. And we will, we will support you by answering your questions when you buy this, if you should use it the first time. Um, but hopefully this video covered everything you need. So from Melissa's studio, as they'd say, to yours, happy quilting, everybody. Sammy, you want to say anything before we go? Say hello. Hi, I'm Sammy. I need a bath, and I am such a dirty dog. Sammy, up here. Say hello. Okay. He, he works for food. I can't complain. Have a great day. <laughs>